Natalie, what are you doing here? Just hoping that your night went a little better than mine. What happened? Hmm. You remember that letter that I wrote to John? Where I... I said if he had any feelings for me, that he could just come to Rody's at midnight. Yeah? Well, obviously he doesn't feel a damn thing for me because he never showed up. So, I guess this is goodbye. Goodbye? Yeah. I'm leaving Landview. For good. So I figured since you knew about my uh, brilliant plan to see if I could have another chance with John, I'd catch up to speed before I left. I'm sorry. Is there anything I can do for you? Yeah, yeah. You can give me a ride to the airport. <laughs> uh, I'm not getting behind a wheel anytime soon. When's your flight? <sighs> Ten minutes. Awesome. I'm not gonna make it. Maybe it's a sign. Yeah. Yeah, a sign that I, I waited too long at Rody's on the million and one chance that John would actually show up. Hmm. So much for thinking that I knew John better than he knew himself. And for what it's worth, my night was a bomb, too. Mm. Mm. Things didn't go so well at prom? <laughs> That's the understatement of the year. Well, what happened? Uh, well, it started out great. You know, Jessica and I, we were, we were connecting again, and, uh, and then she sent me straight on that real quick. She made it clear she wasn't going to trade in her feelings for Christian tonight or ever. Why isn't this making me feel any better? It's a good question. It's like love, right? It's supposed to make you feel great. It just makes you feel stupid. You wake up wishing you could take back everything you did the night before. It didn't end with John not showing up at Rody's tonight, did it? No, no. I mean, why quit while you're behind? Oh, Roxy showed up and I let her convince me to Go find John. You know, maybe he hadn't found the letter. So I went to his office and I got there right in time to see him locking lips with Marty with my letter open right in front of them. Oh, man. It's okay. At least now I know without a doubt things are over for John and me. For good. <clears throat> I am not sorry for what I did. I mean, embarrassed, absolutely. But at least now I know for sure where I stand. Uh, join the club. Mm. Okay, out with it. Just tell me what happened tonight. Jessica remembered something. Are you serious? What? Tell me. Uh, Jessica looked at me the way she used to. It was only a moment, but uh, I saw my Jessica there. And in that split second, I knew, she knew what we meant to each other. Well, did you call mom and dad? Oh, there, was, there was nothing to tell. Jessica denied it right after it happened. It was, she denied remembering anything, that she felt anything. You know, it's still all about Christian for her. She, she even rigged the vote for prom king and queen. What? Yeah, she stuffed a ballot box to make it look like everyone voted for her and Christian. She fully expected them to go up on that stage and get their crowns. And... Oh, no, and she thought Christian was going to go along with that? Uh, he rejected her right there in front of everybody. Huh. Well, that wasn't the end of it. Huh. Chris proposed to Layla. Just overheard. Oh, God. Yeah, so by the time I got her home, she was pretty much a wreck. Brody, I'm... I'm really sorry. I just wanted Jess to know that it wasn't the end of the world, that maybe it was the beginning, you know, especially if she's starting to remember things again. But she didn't want to hear it. So I got desperate. I thought if I could just get her to understand that her memories were right there, just under the surface, that, that I could get her back. What did you do? Exactly what everybody told me not to do. I told Jess she couldn't remember because she didn't want to. That she was stuck in an innocent time because Mitch tried to rape her. What happened? Well, not only Jessica not remember or believe me 
She hates me for even saying it. <sighs> Brody said the most. It was her, Jessica. I just wanted her back. And I ended up making her big night even worse. Well, it's not your fault. What? Did somebody else tell her what that freak did? Look, it's awful, Brody. But she's got to face it eventually. But she's not ready. <laughs> That's what tonight was for, wasn't it? Isn't that what everyone's favorite therapist said? Well, Marty, I think, just thought that her memories were going to come back, but and she was right for a minute. Uh, guess anyone can have a good night. She was also right about John picking her over me, so she's two for two. You sure you don't want to actually hear it from John before you close no, the case? No, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to see it. I, I don't ever want to look John in the face again, which is why I have got to get on the next plane to London. Well, don't hang up when you're done. I'm booking the seat next to you. Come on, Brody. I mean, I have family in London. I can go work at my dad's company. You can't just leave town. Why not? Well, for one, the LPD. They need you. You're an awesome cop. <laughs> the Heathers in England, too, you know. Right? <clears throat> Inspector Lovett, Scotland Yard, at your service. One more time with that accent? No, I can't do Scottish, but a couple more shots and I'll give you a mean Detroit. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> Oh, listen, honestly, I would feel a lot better if you were still in the forest and you could be looking out for John. You think you're magically going to forget about him if you go to London? Magic would be nice. Yeah. Or at least a distraction. Something to make this hurt go away. I thought... John's been in my heart so long. I don't know how to get him out. Jessica was the best thing that's ever happened to me. And I lost her for good. So I know exactly how you feel.